All right, guys, welcome to Graphic Novel Geeks. We have a special guest with us. Uh, do you want to take it away, Joe? Yeah, so, hey, everybody. We have a special show today. We have a guest uh, artist, writer, um, martial artist, uh, <laughs> action figure aficionado, um, many other things on this list. <laughs> we have uh, Don Aguilio here uh, with us today, um, San Francisco-based artist, uh, known for uh, his creator on series Rise. Uh, he has created an anthology series with a bunch of other artists called Shards, uh, printed with his company, IH Studios. He has done covers for Spawn, and just recently he contributed to DC Pride 2023. And also, Isuge Pinoy as well, which we talked about in another show. So we got Shards here, Isuge Pinoy, and then of course the DC Pride anthology. But yeah, no, so he is very talented. He is a man of many skills, <laughs> uh, but that's enough uh, of an introduction. Let's, uh, let's have him, uh, you know, hype himself up. <laughs> with his own actual words <laughs> so but yeah don so thanks for being here uh yeah let's uh, let's get into it um artists obviously um you know what made you want to start drawing you know uh what were some of your i guess first kind of sketches i guess you know like you kind of have that uh that once that spark you get as a kid and that one thing that maybe you kept drawing that really pushed you to kind of really pursue it <laughs> all right uh first of all this is my first uh first uh, video like podcast so i'm i'm just now coming in terms with the fact that people can see my face while i while i uh, while <laughs> so now i'm suddenly nervous uh especially since you guys rolled off the uh the credits there um i don't i don't take compliments very well i kind of hide but uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm i try to be all those things but i am for first and foremost an artist uh i started I'm a 90s kid, or well, I'm an 80s kid who started drawing in the 90s, and uh, I followed my brother's sort of lead. He has since dropped the drawing pencil um, and sort of endorses me all the time. But he he started drawing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, you know, Tim Burton Batman when we were young. And uh, I sort of just looked over his shoulder and mimicked him. And then I, you know, started to draw like, you know, she or something like that. And I, I realized there was there was this independent thing all sorts of independent things happening on my end. And um, uh, that's that's sort of what started it. And then uh, during uh, my, I think it was my birthday party, my friend re-gifted an X-Men foil cover to me. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. And the cover was already dog-eared. And I'm like, oh, so this is one of your comics you just sort of grab walking out the door to, to hand to me. <laughs> um, so it was so, one of those things where I'm like, well, gee, thanks. And didn't realize it was going to be formative for, you know, my both my, development as an artist and as a as an uh you know as a comic book geek growing up uh I really should have that that one framed but uh I had to stick it in the collection since um I started hitting the dollar bins and really filling in the rest of the collection for, for the uh, X-Men <laughs> nice. but um yeah I should I really should frame that one but um yeah I'm a, I'm a fine arts major at from Penn State so I um, I started pre-med and switched to art as soon as I took that freshman art course that, you know, everyone sort of has to choose a, an outside credit outside their major. And I fell in love with it. And then, wow, that that's a major switch. So you, you were pre-med <laughs> and then you just mm -hmm. took this one elective class and it was so impacting that you're like, see you later, med. I'm going with yeah. art, huh? Yep. Yeah. Wow. You're processing it better in real time than my parents did, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> I, I switched and then told them. Um, so, and as you know, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So, uh, conservative Filipino, you know, Asian parents, you can, you can just imagine yeah. uh, the trauma that that sort of dealt them and uh, uh, what sort of actually, I mean, surprisingly. Um, even after the many surprises after that, that I, uh, that I threw their direct and they, they handled that pretty well. So I got to give them credit for that. And, you know, they were like, fine, let's see, let's see what happens. Uh, at least cool. I didn't have to, I didn't have a huge bill with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with that switch. <laughs> that's great. That's sort of the intro. I, I don't, I don't know where else to, where else to go from there. A lot's happened since then. <laughs> yeah, clearly. 
Um, but so yeah, okay. Uh, but who uh, like were your influences? Like some of your favorite artists, um, you know, who you maybe tried to emulate at some point, or who just kind of like you know just inspired you. Um, who inspired me? Like, as well as a, as a fine artist, um, uh, and as a the, with a uh, visual design in theater. Um, okay. I, I'm, I have like a weird sort of fine arts, um, background. So if, if you know the painter, Jack Vetriano, uh, you might see a little bit of his work in mine right now in, in mine, because, um, he's an, he's an oil painter, but the drama in his work and there, then the narrative in his work sort of dark and edgy and, uh, you know, uh, that's sort of what I tried and hit. Uh, in recent years, I've, I've grown to expand my palette a little bit and be a little quirkier, but it always seems to, to my, my work sort of seem, always seems to touch on that dark edginess, which is mm -hmm. why if you, if you ask about my influences, uh, if you talk about film, Bram Stoker's Dracula is, is like mm -hmm. my first and foremost uh, uh, sort of major influence aesthetically. Um, Oh man, I'm <laughs> so weird. You got my book right there. Uh, yeah. So if you if you did pick up the Pride uh, issue, you'll you'll sort of see a hodgepodge um, of, of all my influences, everything from palette to to figure work. Um, let's see here. I spent some time in Rome in college, so uh, the classic masters, the classic uh, Renaissance and um, Baroque masters, uh, heavily influences my work. But if you're talking comic book art and through the 90s, I was uh, I was heavy into the cliffhanger sort of pantheon of artists and creators. So uh, so all of those all of those guys are, are still sort of speaking or have a voice, a visual voice in in what I do. Uh, but since then, I, I, just, I, I pick up here and there, especially with the advent of social media. Um, I'm constantly inundated with new heroes. Um, picking up new ways to do things, uh, having dialogues with, uh, with people about everything from, um, you know, resolution to canvas size to RGB versus CMYK, like all, all those things, uh, <laughs> all those kinds of uh, technical, sort of boring to, to other people, but those are really, you know, riveting. Uh, not to Matt, a, a, a tattoo, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, he's an artist as well, but I see him nodding. <laughs> Yeah, um, what was it? Usually, when you know you talk to a professional in any discipline, right? They're like, "Oh, my, my work's really boring. Everything under the hood." Uh, you know, I, I just um, I'm always learning, and I'm like, "That that that might seem trite, but it's it's always true." And I'm on the edge of my seat trying to figure figure out how other people are doing things. I'm not into that whole thing where you know it's an oversaturated market and and blah blah blah. If if your pencil is to your own canvas, you have your own voice. So as long as you're not tracing. There's value yeah. to your work, yeah, you know. Right. Yep. <laughs> Tracing. No, it makes me think of that scene from um what was that Chasing Amy? Uh <laughs> the anchor. It's like, oh, so you trace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was talking to Joe earlier. I was talking to Joe um about comics. And there's some artists, they they hire models. Right, and they trace oh, it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. In the book, and you can kind of tell when it's trace oh. when it's drawn. Like mm -hmm. when the pose is just too much, like you know, it's like it's like too much, like perfect, and it's like they traced it. It's a photograph. Yeah, I don't I, know if you can I, tell that sometimes, but it, if you oh yeah, videos, you, you can tell. But I, I just as an artist, I don't, I don't know how you, um, I don't know why that how um exciting that would be to to go on model all the time Usually like they're writers they don't have an artist so they take pictures of someone and they trace it oh i see yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't i don't know about that kind of micromanagement <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i was uh, um fortunately i haven't worked with any, any micromanagers like that ever so um I got I got pretty close once, and 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 that guy was a uh, little bit of a pervert too. So I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I I uh, fired that client real fast. I'm like, no, nope, not doing that. Mm. Wow. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> well, that, that sounds like a right. story for <laughs> yeah, a, that's a story. adult yeah. show. I kind of want to hear that story. <laughs> yeah, I have that comic right here if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, while we're on the subject of that, of not being micromanaged, you know, it seems like you've had a lot of creative freedom to kind of, you know, you know, flex your muscles and whatnot. Um, so with that being said, uh, let's talk about rides a little bit you know that's your creator own title mm -hmm. you know writer artist letterer everything so uh, why don't you uh tell us about that you know tell the viewers you know you know give a give us the elevator pitch um if you can <laughs> um well yeah I'm, uh, if you can condense it because i know you have a lot of world building and it's a very uh, deep story yeah well you're a, and I hate the word I, when you're a busy person world building <laughs> world building is is a fun escape right so mm -hmm. I'm fortunate to have created something that I I'm always excited about so if I'm if I don't have time to write a whole issue which I haven't for a really long time as 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 Joe probably knows because I uh you know we we talk about that process all the time um you know I'm, I'm drawing something from that world so it's constantly adding to the bible but it is a it's a labor of love that hasn't uh that hasn't uh, had my attention for a while. I really wish I had more time for it. Um, I'm fortunate to, to have the work that I do now, but um, I'm slowly reconstructing what that process is gonna look like to, to actually carve out time for it. Um, but yeah, Rise is, <laughs> wow. Uh, Rise <laughs> is my own sort of, um, my take on my own traumas. I I, I don't know how uh, I, I don't know how trite it sounds, but it's it's sort of my therapy. I, I know that writing shouldn't or, or you know creator own comics shouldn't shouldn't be a form of therapy. I hear, but uh, well, that's okay. Yeah. That's no, really fine. Like, that's another that, that's, all, that's, that's art. No, that's, that's art that's in fine. general. I yeah. feel like that's for everyone. I kind of think. Yeah, I, I just think so uh, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I don't know if it's self indulgent. It it. it there are parts of it that are self-indulgent, but in a, in a way that I hope other people enjoy or that resonates with other people, either aesthetically or narratively. But um, it's an ensemble cast um, that that uh, set that's set in a projected future of the Bay Area as I know it. I didn't grow up here, but you know this is my home. Um, but there are elements of it that are from my own culture. There are elements of it from my own um, upbringing and my own coming out. Uh, there are five main voices in that ensemble who all take on their own point of view on this um, adventure, and uh, it's um, you know it's it's not seen through a, a child's eye, but it's sort of uh, piggybacks on a nine-year-old's sort of path to assuming the throne of this you know uh, fantasy world where there are dark creatures in the shadows, you know, waiting to to take her out. And then there are uh, four reluctant strangers sort of guiding her on this journey. So uh, all that being said, you can sort of fill in the gaps or, or read the comic. Um, there are six issues out right now through through Scout. And um, uh, I, we used to have a print shop, IH Studios, downtown San Francisco. And the last the last thing I created on there was, um, was this uh, sort of compilation of all six. And it has my favorite piece of art on it, which is probably the one that took the the one piece of art that's taken the least amount of time to sort of float <laughs> out of me. Uh, and, you, and I don't know, artists out there, if you, you know, you something flows out of you and you, you make it an hour and suddenly everyone likes it. And the one that took you like 100 hours, <laughs> no one's ever talking about. And it's, yeah. it's one of those things. So um, I, I'm proud of it. And I, I'm I'm really um, grateful that there are people that it resonates with people, but I'm also feeling really guilty that I haven't paid attention to that family of characters for, for a while now. I'm looking to dive back in as early as uh, mid July. After nice. San Diego Comic Con. Cool. So awesome. I, I've got a couple of follow up questions for you. Uh, the, the first and easiest would be you said that this was uh published by scout so mm -hmm. that means that people could uh go to their local comic book store and ask them to order it if they don't have it available on the shelves is is correct. that correct correct however right. however uh-huh um, you can't find issue one through three in the uh in the bins uh you're probably not going to have any luck getting it through scout because the first i think first and second printing 
are are sold out of a lot of their their older ish, uh, older series. Okay. So the hard part is either finding it uh, locally or you know through eBay or something like that. Um, because okay. uh, I don't think they did a third third run. So um, is there there's no collection out then currently? Uh, not currently, because there there are some things for the trade. Not yet. That are still. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> not yet. yet. Okay. Okay. That's well, the answer. Not yet. No, you're a good salesman. Oh, okay. But, but, hopefully, but, we'll see it'll that come. Soon. It'll come. <laughs> All right. Great. Great. Yeah. And then uh, my next question was: um, you you said that this comic has elements of your culture, um, but you know some people may not really know what your culture is. Could you tell okay. us more about what you mean by that, and maybe what kind of elements you play into your comic? Uh, Great segue, thanks. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, contextually, I'm I'm um, a Filipino American. I'm a, actually uh, an immigrant Filipino uh, from Pennsylvania. So I'm um, when I came over here, I went right into like uh, Central PA, uh, mm -hmm. the most suburban place you could possibly grow up in. So it's a huge culture shock. Um, so parts of Parts of what I, uh, parts of the cult, the cultural aspects I bring into the book are sort of my investigation into my own culture and and you know connecting with it in ways that I, I never have because I didn't grow up in it um, as much. So here in the Bay Area, I'm part of a dance company, a Filipino folk dance company. Uh, we're a performing arts company, and through there we we learn everything from uh, the music, the dance, to the attire that we uh, that we wear on stage. We actually purchase directly from the the indigenous people in the Philippines. Mm. Um, so there are elements of that that are in that are in the book. Uh, I I tread very carefully about appropriation and things like that, but I strive to to um, to advocate and endorse uh, where where those elements come from. But you know, aesthetically, we're always pulling pulling from from everywhere we can, and um, I, I really want to sort of be a portal to a cultural portal to, to people who don't know anything about the Philippines and the seven thousand islands, and all the people, all the different cultures that um, that that entails. So, um, yeah, yeah, th that that's great. You know, you know, um, like representation really matters to all of, us, all of us here at Graphic Novel Geeks. And also, uh, you know, we're all very close to Daily City, which has a, a huge Filipino population. So, um, you know, it's it's not foreign to us. Um, you know, the the Filipino people are are very, um, you know, in our in our line of sight, where I guess maybe in other parts of the United States, maybe not so much, but definitely here you um, Filipino culture is uh, very large. And, you know, uh, no. <laughs> interesting about that representation, I also I also used to think there aren't that many of us, and this this could this could be about any culture. There aren't many of us anywhere else because you know there, we have a we have sort of a uh, convergence here. But uh, our company sometimes our members go out go out to places like the Midwest or mm. the South or something like that, and we we would you know find pockets of our culture who want us to come and you know teach music and uh music and dance um over there so there are you know we, we don't know we don't know where there are pockets of people and that's it's important the representation is important for those people to know uh you're not alone in sort of the melting pot of the, the united states and you know maybe they'll they'll discover even more around that area so i'm sure there are daily cities everywhere they're just not as mm. self-aware you know it's kind of part of our mission cool uh, how yeah. So how does that make you feel like when you go out to middle of, of nowhere and you find these people that are like so happy to see you? Uh, you know? <laughs> we get both, we get sort of both, um, <laughs> we get both responses. Like, uh, so there, there, are parts, for example, there are parts of, there, there are parts of our um, cultural artifacts or there are parts of our country where, you know, we still wear the loincloth. It's called the Bahag. Right. So uh -huh. we go on tour like in Eastern and Western Europe, for example. So imagine taking taking that taking that to a place that's uh, almost exactly the, op the opposite or some place where they've never seen that before. And um, so the culture shock is uh, performing for a community of people in in Europe who 
have never seen that and don't know how may not know how to appropriately you know sort of mm. process that so sometimes we get people who come behind us and take pictures of you know um mm. when, we're, <laughs> when we're dressed or okay not as dressed oh. i don't know how to say that but you know, <laughs> so it's like so in real time it, it's hard to to be like you know to to not feel uh, the negative uh, effects of that, but we also have to understand part of, and this is important for representation. Anything from pride, you know, the pride anthology to performing for um, all, uh, communities you, you don't usually perform for. It part of that education to be on the front line of like having to take the negative response, or how do I say that the the. Un unexpected responses, unexpectedly negative responses from people who aren't exposed mm -hmm. to it or have never been exposed to it. Um, but you know, that's the hill we die on as, as artists mm -hmm. and advocates, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can imagine that can be uh, kind of hard and, and disheartening at times, but it sounds like you take it in pretty good stride with a pretty good attitude. Oh yeah, especially especially since I'm pretty loud and proud on on my Instagram. Um, I get DMs all the time, and and I see I see people like, oh, I'm totally unfollowing because oh, you're gay. I'm like, oh, okay, I great, thank you, <laughs> thanks for okay. tuning in. You know, we'll see you later. I, I don't I don't know what that's supposed to do to me, but um, <sighs> I guess that's supposed to weaken the voice or you know get me to, to shut mm. off about it, but um. Unfortunately, it affects other people out there um, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot in a lot bigger ways. You know, they actually stop talking, or uh, that's unfortunate. And mm -hmm. this is the month yeah. to, to celebrate exactly the opposite to to be who you are, right? Right. Yeah. Well, um, say uh, on that note, since you mentioned Instagram, uh, mm -hmm. well, to change that note a little bit, but since you mentioned Instagram, what is your uh, Instagram handle that people can find and follow you at? Uh, Instagram handle, um, my Gmail. Ooh, is that dangerous? <laughs> uh, Maybe. My Instagram Maybe. handle, my, my Twitter, if that means anything, um, is Art of Don Aguilio, A G U I L L O. Uh, it's also my portfolio. So a lot of my work comes from from that. A lot of my my incoming clients are 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 from folks who sort of trip on that and and see my work on there. All right. Cool. Sometimes I call him my business partner. It it talks a lot more than I do. So, <laughs> so uh, you find Don, everything on there from action figures to uh, uh, to uh, other artists who I, I um, uh, other artist heroes who I, I like to endorse on there too. Cool. But Don, oh, that's so oh, um, but so yeah, you had something. <laughs> hey, I have a little question. Um, yeah. you said you do oil painting and you're a fine artist. Did you? Yeah. Do you do you use digital sometimes, or do you do mostly uh, like uh, brush and paper and some of that? Oh, uh, oh, uh, you think uh, it's it's great that you think I actually did you know brush and paper on on DC. I mean, it looks that's, good. That's all so, uh... digital. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm humble and I'm honored, but uh, no, I wish I had the space, uh, and the time, space and time, mm -hmm. yeah. precious resources uh but uh to to do like tr more traditional work but uh the digital workspace is is the demand right now just because you can shoot things off while you're sitting on the muni mm -hmm. you know you, mm -hmm. you can shoot that, them off that's 100% true yeah. right yeah you know um so yeah so i i have i have my my walk home on my desk uh that i rarely use because I'm, I'm usually on the move or i'm sitting somewhere somewhere else remotely on my my ipad which is my new best friend so don't tell my best friends that, but yeah, it's my new best friend. <laughs> um, cool. But yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the canvas. You know, the, I'm trying to integrate that into the workspace online. If those, you know, geek art artist geek friends out there, um, my work, my, the integration of the iPad and the Wacom sort of together, because I'm not on Photoshop anymore, but I, 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 I'm trying to figure that out as I'm slowly getting back into sequ sequential art. Um, so I'm constantly sort of questioning process and my Instagram is sort of a story of what, what new thing I'm trying that's, you know, frustrating and challenging and, you know, sometimes a complete failure. So I'm not, I'm not averse to putting experiments on there. Um, it seems that people like to watch 
process more than they do the finished piece sometimes. So uh, <laughs> yeah. that's that's pretty fun. Um, and again, I get both uh, negative and positive feedback, which you know both I learned from a lot. So, so Don, you're saying that like, uh, let's just take the DC Pride story in particular, yeah. that this is all just created 100% digitally. You don't do like layouts on paper first or anything like that? No, sir. Wow. Um, My brain yeah. couldn't handle that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I wish I could say I have this little pocket notebook and it's this leather bound thing I've had for, for 10 years. No, I don't. Nothing as romantic as that. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. No, because, you know, undo is my second best friend. So <laughs> do, do I make a lot of... Um... I mean... That's why I would yeah. I do digital too because the freaking yep. undo button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the undo button. You, you so have your, easy, your, like, your, I'm right-handed, so my left trigger fingers for Control Alt Z are always sort of like tapping the the the, the table, even when I'm not drawing. So um, even when I'm drawing on pencil, like if at at, at, at Comic Con <laughs> when I'm drawing like someone's commission or something, I find my thumb and forefinger sort of tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! Like I can't I can't undo that line. This is it's so. <laughs> Not to say, not to say, don't don't come for commissions at Comic Con. I'm not saying I'm a lot more nervous doing that than I am um, <laughs> sitting on the Muni on the on the ride downtown uh, on my iPad. So huh. I'm getting better at that. I I hope to someday do a a, a quick like comic uh, uh, web comic that's that's purely um, traditional. Like that's one of my sort of dream projects. But um, mm. I have to practice. So. Yeah. all right great thanks don um so joe you got some more questions for don about maybe some of his other work oh i have like oh we have millions of questions for don but we we'll also have millions of answers because you, <laughs> you, we're open books to each other when <laughs> yeah. but just to give um, you context uh when when we stop in the shop downtown uh joe would stop by and and uh bring fries or something we just sit and, and chat about comics <laughs> cool <laughs> but yeah so i mean i well we talked about isugi Pinoy um on a previous show but i'd like to actually you know hear it from you you know yeah. just experiences working on that project yeah thanks thanks again guys for uh endorsing that project there's another one that's a couple years old now and another another universe that um, I, uh, I co-created with Raf Salazar, who I hope to, you guys definitely bring onto the show. Also, I mean, I mean, he's not he's not Bay Area anymore. Anymore, but you know, in our hearts <laughs> and in our minds, you know, he's he's still he's still here, uh, um, burning the candle from both ends. I'm sure he's doing that on the other side of the country. But Raf is um, my co-creator on uh, Isugi Pinoy, which is a I would like to call it a public arts commission with uh with uh cool arts which is a uh, local commissioner of uh filipino based perform performance and and artworks that are sort of um in, you know advocating and endorsing for um up and coming artists and creators and musicians and um anyone in their own creative craft who who have their own sort of narrative on the filipino or film experience um this one was a sort of a narrative uh, universe based on the the local heroes of the Soma and the Bay Area, specifically the Soma district, which is um, our cultural heritage district, officially our cultural heritage district for the Filipino community of the of San Francisco. So there are people in that community who have helped with public works, who have helped with uh, housing, who have helped with um, um, events and things like that downtown that have helped the community. And we wanted to sort of be a voice for them and to show them who they are, which is uh, that they're they're all they're heroes for the community. So we were asked to turn them into superheroes. Well, I guess what we what we what they felt we do best, um, me and Raf. So we we did everything from asking them their favorite powers to if you could do something for this community, what what superpower do you wish you had that could help you do exactly that? So some, you know, some of these guys aren't comic book geeks, so they were like, I wish I could just 
be everywhere at once or get from place to place. We're like, oh, so you want to teleport? They're like, is that what that's called? <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. And, and we're like, yeah, you, you want to be a teleporter. Or I wish I could just, you know, like um, let everyone know how important they are to me. So that, oh, you're an empath. Oh, you're a telepath. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's like, it's it fun, like letting them know that, you know, <laughs> other people, other people have that, you know, sort of wishful thinking too. And nice. say that in, in through sequential art and through storytelling so uh we did that and uh so we we tried to throw them into their universe we gave them you know uh, everything from a villain to to backstories and uh cool. yeah it's it's a that one was a labor of love too it was all it was mm-hmm. a lot to, to handle because we're dealing with real people mm-hmm. and we're dealing with um we're dealing with uh, uh you know com- a commissioning agency that didn't really know comics that well but they were like they gave us the keys to the kingdom and a blank canvas and they're like do what you do mm. and we're grateful for for that uh experience and it was also one of my first uh, big ma- big major um projects with with raf when he first got to san francisco so it was our first foray into working together creatively and we're both artists and that doesn't always work um so of course it has its challenges but we're still really proud of that work and uh hope you guys get to see it yeah yeah it uh sounded uh pretty cool when joe was talking about it before um you know looks really interesting and i just i just love that idea of of taking non-comic people and telling them about how things work in the comic (laughs) world and and transforming them into the superheroes that that's hilarious um well what is cool is some of those people are comic book geeks so as soon as we gave them, you know, we, we put them in the cockpit and they're like, well, what super ha- power do you have? And then they go, oh, you know what I always wanted to do? And then they're uh-huh. like, I, wanted, I always wanted to like create multiples and like be able to, to like, you know, when they geek out, it's like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> you know, like it was fun working with people who don't geek out, but it was really, really fun and really easy working with the comic book geeks who are like our age and grew up, um, grew up big geeks too. Um, so cool. they got really into colors to to how they want their costume to look, and and that's when that's when it sort of took off. And and Raf, if you if you know Raf's work, you should ch- um, check him out. Raf Salazar Art Salazar, um, check him out on Instagram. He's really into like costume design and things like that. So the mm-hmm. world building uh, was a he really dove, dove into the world building. Uh, so check out check out his work. He's fantastic. Nice, thank you. And yeah. where where should we look to get a copy of a Sugid Panoy? Uh, cool, coolarts.org will have copies with them, K-U-L-A-R-T-S. Um, and uh, we, as we as a shop, we used to have some, but I think we sold out at our shop or they have mm. the rest of our copies. So locally here in San Francisco, you should be able to, to get that copy, but I think they also ship out. Um, and they're a nonprofit, which means um, your your uh your the, your purchase of that comic would be a donation to the nonprofit. nice cool which helps uh build you know artists and and mm-hmm. the local community as well awesome yeah great <laughs> very cool so uh-huh. yeah um that project i like i could tell when i was reading it you know it was a labor of love and yeah no i just like absolutely loved it and just felt you know the energy from it and like the icing on the cake was that you actually got to work with like your friend on it right yeah you know yeah. you got to do it with like you know with your buddy and it's just like you're doing this really like awesome like cultural project for the community mm-hmm. like you no know, it really comes across and that's like a really cool thing that uh not a lot of people get a chance to do and it's so. a gamble working with friends <laughs> it is yeah. a gamble and anyone who's worked with friends it's like Oh, okay. You, 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 the, the feedback loop is a little, uh, a little, um, a little challenged because it's like, you, you know, you, especially if you've never worked together before, it's like, how far do I go? What can I say? Like, do we work well together? That's a, that's a hard question to answer. And then, you know, once you get past that answer, it's like, how do we work well together? Like that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's what you want to answer. Um, because you know, if it, the way you know you're good is if you know how to weave sort of your sensibilities together mm-hmm, and start mm-hmm. canceling each other or trying to change the other person's uh, work. So 
kind of that that dance was uh frustrating and challenging mm -hmm. and uh full, you know fulfilling at the same time nice very nice cool. it's actually gotten me better with working collaboratively with with clients i, I know the right questions to ask and, I, and since they're not my friends first and foremost um i'm a little less shy about being like listen <laughs> for me to do my job I need to do this like i don't i don't ask it um i don't yeah i'm not i'm not so timid about that anymore i'm sorry that was great <laughs> you're like listen <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean you know the people are like this way it should be done like this they're like hey i'm an artist yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't, and I don't want it to ever sound like like ego or like being demanding, you know, um, because I have something to deliver. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it also sends the message that I'm serious about what we're about to do, and um, that they 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 take me seriously, and that they know that I'm I'm committed to what we're about to do together next. Nice. So, well, speaking of collab being collaborative, um, so moving on, like I guess, like so, obviously you you've done your own creative projects and you've worked with friends and then you did a project with a nonprofit. You've also worked in, with Image and, and clearly DC, you know, for the Pride Anthology. So just kind of curious uh, what those collaborations were kind of like, because uh, in those scenarios, you know, you like, I mean, you worked with clients before and you've gotten scripts, you've drawn, but just wondering in terms of like, you know, I guess when that larger stage i guess like was that a a little uh were you a little nervous or oh my or yeah. was it well, yeah. well oh probably God, yeah. yes but <laughs> no it's it's like a world stage it's it's um it's scary there's a lot of responsibility attached to it um in in sort of the back end emails they never talk about that responsibility they're just all about you being an artist they're like do what you do and I'm like that's not so easy giving <laughs> You know, giving me this responsibility, this task, but they they really they they they've all treated me like, okay, you're an artist. We we like your work, so do what you do with this set of characters. So when you say collaboratively, specifically with Image uh, McFarland Productions and DC Comics, um, those are the projects where I I don't think I should think more collaboratively, but I I think more like I have a responsibility as a um, as a uh, as an employee or being employed by them to handle their work, you know? Right. So uh, I think it's different from being like an accountant, right? You do so much gotcha. then you're like, I don't own a part of that. But part of my soul goes into this work. So that way we're collaborative. But at the same time, when when, when they said, okay, Apollo and Midnighter, I'm like, oh man, Apollo and Midnighter, these are not my characters. Someone <laughs> has been following, someone out there has been following Apollo and Midnighter since their birth. Mm. And for me to suddenly say, oh, well, I'm going to draw them the way I draw. That's, um, that's not fair to the, that person. Mm. Um, and it's, mm. it's interesting. Yeah, It's scary, but you know, you also get the fans who are like, oh, I wonder how they're going to evolve next. So I've had both sort of responses mm. and I've been watching the reviews and they're like, yeah, this guy's stuff doesn't really do, it isn't really right for Apollo Midnighter. And I'm like, cool. Oh, really? I get it. I get it. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the feedback where it's like, yeah, I don't really care for this guy's, uh, this, this, this art style. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, man, he really doesn't, look, they, sorry, they really don't like my work. Um, And that's really useful because then, you know, later on, if they ever give me the, uh, the, the seat, uh, again, for Apollo Midnighter, I know to bring in some elements that are exactly the opposite to sort of, mm. uh, to play around with a, a different way of looking at them, or a more um, orthodox way of looking at them with my own voice. You know, because this is when I first shot Apollo Midnighter. But my friends who love Green Lantern, when they gave me Alan Scott, I'm like, mm. oh my god, this is a possibility. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm a little more. Um, I was a little more uh, familiar with the Alan Scott and. Uh, but at least the world that that um, Josh wrote for me is is near and dear to my heart, specifically mm. because of the context and because of the narrative. So um, that was a huge that was huge fuel for that uh, that fire. Um, with with image, I mean, um, uh, Todd found me on Instagram, 
Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, that's <Sorry>. awesome. <laughs> One of those things where, you know, he, 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 he talks to you like a person and he's like, yeah. I'm a huge fan of your work. Want to see if you wanted to do a cover for me. And I'm like, <laughs> you're like, yes. I, I don't remember how I responded, but I'm like, yeah, of course. Sure. And I'm like, this is Todd McFarlane. This is, no, this is some kind of bot or something like that. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I think I was a little more casual and, and uh, the response was like, uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll have, um, I'll have Thomas like get back to you. I'm like, I don't know who Thomas is. I'll have Thomas get back to you on, um, on setting up a date and time for us to talk. And I'm like, uh, he sounds like he's saying the right things. Yeah, sure. Shoot me a time. I was, I was still really skeptical about it until we actually got on the phone. And I'm like, holy crap, that's Tom McFarlane's voice. And he's mm-hmm. really talking to me about my work. And um, yeah, so he, 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 he's like, he had me look at my own Instagram and he pointed out things that he really liked. And I'm like, mm-hmm. God, I'm having a, a, por- sort of, a sort of portfolio review mm-hmm. on the phone with, with Todd. And uh you know, he chuckled and, and and it was really it was a really important conversation to know that I'm talking to another artist first and foremost and another like big fan of the work that we do as an industry indie mm-hmm. or or big company, right? So like he talked like a fan, not like a boss, mm-hmm. or, you know, so, something like that. So it was like I just want you to do something that looks cool and feels good, and you know these these, these kinds of words. So. Um, collaboratively working with the Spawnverse, um, they've they've given a lot of freedom. They're like, mm. shoot me your ideas, not I oh, want wow. you to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's good. They're like, throw something down, send it. We'll uh, we'll let you know what we think. And uh, it's been like that ever since. And uh, it, uh, I've just gotten. I hope I've gotten better and faster. Um, but I'm I'm still learning that world too. Cool. Well, like I hey. just got one rejected because because I I drew gunslinger and they're like, uh, actually Donnie doesn't look like that anymore. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Oh, I, I looked online. I'm like, oh, and he sent me he sent me new uh he sent me uh, new images. He's like, he actually he his look has changed. I'm like, wow, it's all right. Let me get let me get right on that. So right. it was good. It, it was important feedback. I was about to give him something really really dated. So, uh, hey, Don, I wanted to jump back a little, which was maybe still getting ahead of ourselves here. But you had mentioned that there were some maybe haters is too strong, but some people giving you kind of a negative response to your Midnight or Apollo story in DC Pride. Mm -hmm. And um, man, you know, I just wanted to say I thought that was one of the best pieces in the book. Um, I think that your art is great. And you were fortunate to get paired up with, you know, a a great writer as well. Definitely, I think my favorite story in the book, but I kind of wanted to go page by page because luckily it's only short you know it's very short only eight page story to just point out what i really like about it all right so it starts off we've got midnighter here and you've got this great splash page it's an Mm -hmm. action scene right he's he's doing some nice flying sidekick and the perspective (laughs) the perspective is a little bit strange it's like where exactly are we looking this from which I felt really captures the chaos of this mm. chaotic battle going on. So it was like the perfect choice for me, right? And then <laughs> as we move into the second page, you've got this great introduction of the characters, right? Uh, these new characters, Queen Lantern, Crime Alley, Brainiac 69, Mother <laughs> Box. Uh, so that must have been fun creating some <laughs> new characters. But this look at the layout. The show, right? <laughs> What's that? This is still a wholesome show, so. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like, just look at the layout here, right? As as each of these new characters is kind of split up, it's not your standard like four panel thing, right? So Mm -hmm. the the layout's very interesting, okay. Um, And we've got you know these great personal interaction scenes that you had talked about. I mean, also not just not to leave out that you're art style is amazing you know you've got this painted work uh style where it's just like blending all these colors um just the like fluidity of everything uh like in some panels but then in other panels they're very static 
right? Uh, the transition between it is just amazing. The use of Keller is great. I mean, just look, look at all these different colors here. Yeah, As we move on, you know, you've got the dark scenes. You're switching up vantage points. You've got these close-ups, mm -hmm. right? You've got a, a, Apollo's hair is using is creating like these negative spaces right at going into these panels um there's just like so many different things going on you've got this dramatic entrance of alan scott again these uh very you know not standard layouts where everything is kind of blurring together in like a dreamlike kind of state you know this is like coming out of apollo's head and then this dramatic like you know i here's my profile view of him I, there's just so much great stuff going on here, you know, it, it's like, I, I can't imagine why anybody would be hating on it. I mean, <laughs> it's just spectacular. I love it. And, uh, you know, great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you Thanks very so much. much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, you sound like you, you know what goes behind, goes, goes on behind all of those pages, all the grueling process of like, you know, staying on model and making sure the figure work is is as correct as it can be and expressive. So, thank yeah. thank you for acknowledging the work behind that. Oh, you're welcome. You you capture it very well. Bang bang up job. Thank you. Um, so I can go down the the list of things people don't like about it, but <laughs> I'll keep that in my notes, I guess, um, so that I can just learn from it. But yeah, definitely definitely haters out there. Definitely haters out there. And they're always going to be haters. No yeah. matter what. <laughs> it's just like, no matter what, you can't win. It's yeah. just going to be, just do you. <laughs> yeah. God's bless them. <laughs> so oh, we have a viewer, a viewer question from a play mat on Twitch. Oh, oh. On Twitter now. Oh. And he said, it's, just, it's, it's for you, Don. He said, oh. representation in media is extremely important, but not always handled well. <clears throat> Filipino representation in comics doesn't seem very prominent from what I've personally experienced, but I was wondering if you have examples that stand out to you, good or bad, of existing characters. I live in the Bay Area, so I have a lot of Filipino friends who often ask me if there are Filipino superheroes, and I never have a good answer for them. Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. um, if we're talking culturally, of the 7,000 islands, there are really really prominent voices and um gatekeeping that's true with most cultures right so when we're learning about indigenous people in the philippines for example we're constantly trying to uncover pre-colonial um pre-colonial aspects of our own culture but even though using the words the singular word culture is inaccurate because this island has very different traditions and very different profiles from that island and uh you know if you wanted to do it ethnographically, you would have to split up the Philippines into many different pieces of the pie to to really talk about uh, all culture. Um, so because it, you know, because of colonialism, it's been pulled into one entity, uh, there is a, a prominent voice. And since then, you know, we're still recovering from the trauma of that. And, and um, uh, comics, even comics, like most of the classic comics are based on American superheroes. So you've got your Captain Barbell, who by namesake is like Captain America, but by powers is a, is more like uh, Superman. And you know it's it's a it's a sort of a classic uh, mm. copycat syndrome. Uh, you've got Darna, who's a lot like Wonder Woman. I mean, I mean everything from what she's wearing or isn't wearing, you know, to <laughs> to um, to powers. So there are cultural aspects of, of those of those heroes that will resonate. Um, but a lot of them are based on what sells in the United States. So we're going to use that narrative. So people, you know, it's more recognizable um, because there, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of that copycat going on. Um, Isugi Pinoy was a sort of uh, an experiment on how we can be sort of the front lines for creating our own narratives. But, you know, Raph and I are both Phil Am, Filipino, Filipino American. So that's a, that in itself is an entirely different voice mm. from being Filipino. So mm. um, the question uh, was, are there good, are there good examples out there right now of Filipino superheroes? If, if, if I'm getting that correctly, I think we are fortunate right now to 
to be at ground zero for the invention of new superheroes that aren't Western based and that are more sort of symptomatic of our investigation our more open investigation of the Philippines as a group of cultures rather than just as a single one. I uh, hope that wasn't too loaded in answer, but the question is big and we're, we're still yeah. trying to answer it as, as we go. So I, I rise is another one. My, the, the nine-year-old central character is um, essentially a Filipino American in a projected future of the Bay Area. So she is trying to process what that what that looks and feels like, even though the word Filipino might not be in there or Philippine X might not be in the book there, uh, um, uh, uh, um, a person of that, of, of my culture will read it as such because they'll see and feel sort of those sensibilities of that investigation. Um, yeah, so I think, I think the door is open for us to do that. So Filipino, Filipinos and Filipino American creators out there, um, you don't need to look elsewhere but inward uh to to be able to tell tell that story and start answering that question ourselves yeah i i i agree I, i'd like to echo that and, and call it a challenge you know dc marvel you guys are trying to diversify um having a lot of different characters with lots of different ethnicity cultural backgrounds but uh sorely lacking in filipino filipino american superheroes um think that it's time um you know, and, and the Filipino creators out there, definitely, um, you know, you guys should be leading the charge. Let's create an awesome Filipino American superhero for DC and Marvel. Let's get them out there. I mean, there or are her. a couple. There are a couple. There's a mutant. There's a there's an X Man. Um, she's a short haired, winged. Um, I forgot her name. I'm not. Um, it's not not Angel Salvatore. No, 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 no. no. She's got feather wings. Oh, um, feather wings. Okay. She's a she's newer student. Uh, oh, Digo Digo just did a, a version of her. Uh, I did look on his Instagram, um, but um, Wave um, is 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 a Filipino um, a Filipino uh, Filipino yeah, Wave superhero. and she's she's actually she's rocking the the Kampila, which is a, a a blade. It's a blade from our culture, but uh, they haven't really done anything with her. Yeah, uh, since Agents of Atlas, and uh, I feel like she deserves her own book, but that's just me being just me me being uh, you know advocating. Uh, she needs the right story though, and I think I think they should mm -hmm. have a Filipino story for her. Um, you know what? Like yeah. I've heard, I, I've read an article. You know about the new Shang Chi movie coming out, Records of Time. Um, they mm -hmm. say he's supposed to lead an all Asian team. So is that Agents of Atlas Asian team? I wonder. Oh, what if, right? that kind of could cool. be. Oh, you're getting my hopes up. I don't like this. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I read an article, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no, I'm uncomfortable. That would be very cool. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of responsibility for them. But you know the the backlash would probably be like, oh, so you're just gonna bring all the Asians into one movie, you know? That would be ambitious. <laughs> well, say, uh, we're we're about wrapping up our hour here, so I'd like to steer the conversation back towards DC Pride specifically, uh, in part because you know uh, June is is Pride Month, among other, um, you know, special things that we're trying to celebrate. But um, so I want to talk about this specifically and a couple of questions for you. I mean, one, how did you end up getting involved in the DC Pride anthology? And two, you've talked a lot about representation for uh, your Filipino heritage, mm -hmm. but also, you know, tell us a bit about what this means to you uh, being represented here. And on a larger audience, how you think that representation of of LGBTQIA plus um, being represented in culture is, you know, um, good for other people, like why it's important. Um, this conversation is relatively new. I came out later in life. Um, and, you know, for a lot of those in, in that community, in, in our community, um, there are just as many 
stories about how that happens as there are people who go through it either those who haven't come out or those who have been out all their lives um and for for most it's tragic or for for many it's tragic i don't mm. know this, but for me um the only tragedy is that i waited this long uh, mm. i feel like if i had come out late, uh, earlier in life i probably would have maybe been more creative or more expressive or you know i wonder what what kind of artwork i would do if i was felt that kind of freedom earlier in life mm. and that's that's a question i don't need to you know sort of keep thinking about um i enjoy my work right now but this um particular project is one of pride for me uh, pride. <laughs> um uh but I, um michael got me on um instagram he same thing he stumbled on my work somehow mm. asked me through email if i would be interested and I'm like, I didn't know how to be cool about it or how to, I didn't know the right words to, to say yes. Um, so I just did it as professionally as I could, but I also threw in some exclamation points in there. Uh, I, I was told by friends not to use them so much, but. <laughs> and who, who's Michael? Huh? Who's Michael? Um, Michael is the, the editor. Um, so Mike, um, uh, he's the editor for uh, the, the DC Pride issue. And okay. he wrangled us up and got me to work with Josh uh, on this piece. Um, and all of the creators in here are part of the LGBTQIA plus community, which is great because I looked at some of the names in here and I'm like, I, I never even knew, you know? Um, to, so to be in the company of not only my own heroes, but to know that they're also members of my community and um, you know, uh, those who and have been through the same kind of story creatively or personally or socially uh, is is a point of pride for me also is it, I'm honored to be among that um, among that group. Um, living in San Francisco, uh, it's it's part of everyday life, which is great. Um, I, I know that the person who picks this up in parts of the country, <laughs> I don't know that they would have this book in parts of the country where I want that person who hasn't come out to have access to it. Um, you know, it's not a book that would be on every shelf, but I hope that it makes it out there, not for any sort of personal fame, but exactly for that, for that person to know that there are, that we're all going through that in some one way or another, um, whether it is culturally or uh, orientation, sexual orientation, um, that these, these stories resonate on, on that, uh, level, but I know not everyone's going to have access to this book. I just hope it makes it into some bin somewhere where some kid really, really needs to read the story and know that they're not alone. Um, and that they don't come out at 30 gnashing their teeth, <laughs> you know, or, uh, waiting forever to tell, uh, their family and friends who either all already knew, or uh, are really, really happy that they get to have that kind of freedom, um, which I personally have enjoyed and encourage uh, those who, who feel alone out there to, to have someone to, to come out to or to just celebrate who they are with. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. Awesome. Very powerful. And, and, you know, this book, as I've been holding up uh, pictures of other stories, you know, it really is a great book. There's uh, just a variety of stories of stories a variety of art styles uh you know a lot of great art in here yeah definitely worth picking up and um you know always good to see different perspectives and yeah. to understand what other people are going through and and just you know get to read some great stories as well yeah in the reviews our big critique is that ours is like heavy-handed and educational and I'm like, that's good, Josh. Like that's, that's Josh, if you're listening, um, that's how I usually handle things. Very heavy handed, very, <laughs> um, but there are really funny stories in here. And just like, like everyone's story is different. Um, the yeah. way some people process this is, is through humor. And it's important to, 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 to see that also so humor is an important way to process anything really. And there's, there's really great work in here. Amazing work in here.
Yeah, and the, this is uh, the third year that DC has done uh, DC Pride. So uh, I imagine they will continue to do this, and hopefully, it's getting you know more and more distribution as it becomes um, a regular thing that's uh, celebrated and looked forward to year after year. Yeah, glad that you were able to be a part of it. Me too. I'm I'm really grateful, and hope hope to see some of you guys listening out there at um, San Diego next month. Uh, I'll have some books on the table. Cool. Well, besides San Diego, what else can we expect to see from you in the future? What are you currently working on? Uh, I just got, uh, let's see, I just got the my trade or my um, variant cover for California Inc., which is by Art Buen and um, Dave Law mm -hmm. uh, with letterer Frank Fetkovich. I don't think I said that correctly. Um, and editor Justin Jampawi. So th this is a really great um, uh, uh, political intrigue book um, in India. And they just, they they had a really successful uh, campaign and uh, it, they got me to do a variant cover on that. So I'm constantly doing variants for um, uh, indie uh, creators out there who, who really like my work and who are really passionate about their work and, mm. and know how to do um, And I'm, I love their, I love their books. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to a Rose City Comic Con in um, when, what month is that? Seattle? Uh, is it? No, it's a uh, Emerald City. No, uh, no, Emerald City is in March. Uh, huh. uh, I'll I'll try to go to that one too. I, and I might go to New York, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, we have we have a bunch in SF here too. I think we're I think they're doing year two of the what was it called? The San oh, Francisco uh, fan, 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 fan Expo. Expo? Fan yeah, November, Expo. November, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm applying to Fan Expo, and I think are you guys going to Fan Expo? Yeah, I, I want to. Maybe I'll have my book there. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Yeah. yeah um, may, maybe I'll do it this year. <laughs> yeah, do it. No, we. You know, and it was. You know, I I, I heard uh, cr 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 criticism for it, but I'm like, it, it, it's just starting and. I guess yeah. it's up to us to make it a big a big deal. So mm -hmm. I I, I want to support something to to support a local big show. Yeah. And if it becomes a big draw, that would be awesome. But it, you know we have to go. Sure. To happen. So. Yeah. But that's so. Uh, Playmat responded to the <laughs> the question he asked you, and he asked him the question. He likes oh. your answer. Or I don't know if it's he or she. I don't know. Um, oh, there was uh, a thumbs up. That was a good answer. Um, but. They, uh, the character you're talking about from the X Men, they think it might be Gabriel Diwa. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gabriel is it? Is her last name Diwa? I. That's what they say. Maybe. Oh. Um, hmm. They have a question mark too, so I don't. They're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. So. Diwa. Diwa or Diwatha means spirit. So. Ah. Oh. But oh, no. I, I think just the fact that we're like not real sure who this character is really emphasizes yeah, the problem. lack of <laughs> of Filipino characters that, yeah. you know, that we know about. <laughs> good call, good call. Anyone, yeah, if you don't know who I'm talking about, check out Digo, Digo Doodles. Um, and he just did it. He does X, he does X-Men like me all the time. So you check out his, his work. Cool. Uh, Sick Chris is high. Don, uh, Chris, is it Chris? You know, it's Yo. Chris. Yeah, Don, it's Chris. Chris. Oh, okay. What's up? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, great. Well, as we're wrapping up, uh, Tatsuo, Joe, you guys have any more questions for Don? I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, well, obviously, it's a, it's a conversation for another day, but uh, uh -oh. just kind of like. The two we got two martial artists in the room, so like I know three because Keith. Oh, well, 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 I mean, I guess like a heads of schools is what I'm getting at. <laughs> heads of schools. Not really? That's awesome. <laughs> and like, so obviously, like it was a little common, like earlier on, looking at um, like uh, you know, Midnighter's uh, kick, just like the accuracy of everything, because clearly you have like martial artists all on this panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never thought that I we we we'd be uh, putting that on the on the spotlight. But yeah, I tried oh. to do the flying sight. Yeah, nice. That's pretty funny. 
That was pretty funny. Yeah, I was gonna put my sword right here, but <laughs> that's in, in in the bedroom. So, um, but yeah, I was trying to do that flying sidekick right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Good. Yeah, look good. Yeah, we'll have to talk about more uh, about that in the future. <laughs> yeah, actually, martial arts is uh, the the choreography of my fight scenes. I'm trying to draw that in, draw mm -hmm. that in uh, to my work a lot, but uh, cool. it's it's hard to do. It is hard to do. I gotta. Yeah. Uh, Chris says, "Battle for the soul today." <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thanks for joining us, Don. It was great having you on our show. Um, everyone, catch us in two weeks on Sunday, the twenty fifth. We'll be having a great episode. Not sure if we're going to have a special guest or not, but uh, we, you know, catch our Instagram or our Facebook or go to our website. Graphic Novel Geeks should find you any of those things, and we'll keep you up to date with what we'll be doing on our next episode, which will be same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. It was great having Don on the show. Great work and some of that. Uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Let me.